When people think of the kinds of movies Harvey and Bob Weinstein produce, the prestige dramas and historical films of Miramax are what usually come to mind. However, through Dimension Films, they also produce a significant number of horror movies and other genre fare that found an audience. Dimension was started by Bob Weinstein in 1992 as a way to release movies that were not considered the right fit for the Miramax name. One of the first things Weinstein did to bolster the Dimension slate was buy up the sequel rights to a few horror films. One of these was Hellraiser, with Hellraiser 3 become the first film released by Dimension Films. It did about the same amount of business as Hellraiser 2 in the United States, which was good enough to keep the franchise going for several more installments, although most of them were released direct-to-video. Dimension also distributed Children of the Corn 2, which eventually grew into a long-running series of films, all the rest would go direct-to-video. Even Stephen King has commented that he has no idea why a short story about a town run by children has gotten so many movies, but he nonetheless appreciates the paychecks. In 1993, Disney acquired Miramax and Dimension, and it makes sense why they would want both the prestige of Miramax and the commercial potential of Dimension. They tended to release films of low budgets, and Dimension in particular had the potential to release a horror movie or action film that truly broke out. And one movie that did was The Crow. The film was originally set to be released by Paramount Pictures, but they dropped the film after the unfortunate death of Brandon Lee on set. Dimension picked it up and spent $8 million to complete the remaining scenes. The Crow received very good reviews and was a box office hit. Unsurprisingly, sequels were made with different actors playing the title role, but none of them were well received. Dimension continued to acquire more franchises, releasing Highlander 3 and most notably getting the distribution rights to the Halloween franchise. However, the first Halloween movie they produced was the infamous Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. That movie went through a production full of disagreements with everyone having a different idea of where the film should go. After test screenings, reshoots, re-edits, and other attempts to make the movie, it was released to a largely negative reaction from fans and critics. The movie performed better than Halloween 5, but the film's legacy is mostly the appearance of a young Paul Rudd and the multiple cuts that exist. Dimension did score a hit with Robert Rodriguez's From Dust Till Dawn, which found favor with critics and immediately became popular among horror fans. It also got two direct video sequels, which you may be noticing is a bit of a pattern for Dimension. Was the film profitable in its franchise potential? Let's make more of them. A major win for Dimension was Wes Craven's Scream. With its characters aware of horror film tropes and clever commentary, the movie became a sleeper hit, surprising everyone who thought releasing the movie during the Christmas season was a bad idea. Scream is even the movie I personally most associate Dimension films with. The movie, of course, spawned a franchise, with Scream 2 and Scream 3 also pulling in solid numbers at the box office. A notable horror film that did not work out was Mimic, directed by Guillermo del Toro. This was his first American film, and the production was a nightmare, with Harvey Weinstein continually bullying him, and the version released in theaters was not del Toro's preferred cut. Del Toro has described making Mimic as easily one of the worst experiences of his career, and it's almost a wonder he still elected to make films for American studios after that. The success of Scream would play a pivotal role in the production of the studio's horror films. Screenwriter Kevin Williamson was brought in to make a new Halloween sequel. Titled Halloween Age 20, 20 years later, it brought back Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode and was a big success, by appealing to the same demographics that helped turn Scream into a hit. Williamson was also involved with The Faculty, directed by Robert Rodriguez, and he made his direct role debut with Teaching Mrs. Tingle. Dimension even began developing a spoof version of Scream, written by Aaron Seltzer and Jason Freeberg. Meanwhile, the Wayans brothers were writing their own parody movie, which the Weinsteins also bought, and in the end, the Wayans version was the one that got made. Despite Seltzer and Freeberg having nothing to do with Scary Movie, they were still credited on the screenplay, much to the Wayans' annoyance. Scary Movie wound up a big success, giving Dimension yet another franchise and showed they could release comedies as well as horror films. One movie that was surprisingly released under Miramax rather than Dimension was the teenage rom-com She's All That. It was exactly the kind of project that would make sense under Dimension, but Harvey Weinstein felt it should be a Miramax title. Apparently, he wanted to show Miramax could release the kind of mainstream blockbuster fare the major studios were known for, but it was still a far cry from the Oscar-nominated films the label specialized in. One person who reprimanded him for this decision was Disney CEO Michael Eisner. Even though She's All That was a box office hit, Eisner felt it did a disservice to Miramax, which had prided itself in releasing prestigious and sophisticated films. Dimension would find success in the family film game when Robert Rodriguez directed Spy Kids. The movie was a big hit with children and their parents, thanks to Rodriguez's colorful imagination and the wish fulfillment plot. As Rodriguez tends to work quickly, it did not take long for him to make two more Spy Kids movies, which also performed very well at the box office. Continuing to score surprise success with horror movies, Dimension released The Others in the summer of 2001. Starring Nicole Kidman, the movie had impressive staying power through August and even into September, as onces took to its supernatural story. Halloween also got another sequel of Jamie Lee Curtis titled Halloween Resurrection, but this would become one of the most hated films in the series among fans and saw a big drop-off from the previous movie. 
a raunchy comedy that did quite nicely for them was Bad Santa. The film managed to stand out among the family films, action spectacles, and Miramax's own dramas during the holiday season of 2003, and found an audience who appreciated its crude take on Christmas, although there were some who took issue with the subject matter of a drunken and foul-mouthed mall Santa. Another hit for Dimension in the 2000s was Sin City, Robert Rodriguez and Frank Miller's adaptation of Miller's graphic novel. The movie got a fair amount of attention for its eye-catching visuals that replicated the look of the comic book and pulled in solid numbers. However, this was also around the time that Disney and the Weinsteins were having a ton of disagreements over budgets and Disney refusing to let them release Fahrenheit 9-11. So the decision was made to part ways. Even though Disney kept Miramax in the film library, the Weinsteins were allowed to take the Dimension film's name with them. Some Dimension films that already deep into post-production were still distributed by Miramax under Disney, though, like The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl and The Brothers Grimm. Like a lot of early Weinstein Company films, it took a little while for Dimension to find a hit after leaving Miramax and Disney. One notable underperformer was the Tarantino Rodriguez double feature of Grindhouse. The concept just did not click with audiences, despite solid reviews, which also resulted in the movies being released separately overseas. A bit of that old Dimension success story did eventually return with the Stephen King adaptation, 1408, which had decent staying power over the summer of 2007. And Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween also found an audience, despite the polarized response, although the sequel did not perform nearly as well. Dimension continued to try its hand with comedies, although most of these came and went from theaters. Remember Who's Your Caddy? What about the promotion? Or the long shots? Although superhero movie did alright, managed to come in before people tired of spoof movies. A lot of the films Dimension picked up for distribution were low-budget horror films that were given little distribution and mostly one direct video. They were able to successfully ride the 3D wave with Piranha 3D. Surprisingly, an attempt to revive Scream with the fourth movie resulted in the lowest grossing film in the series. Had nostalgia not kicked in yet for the franchise? Who knows, but its underperformance has always fascinated me. Another low-performing fourth film in a popular Dimension-produced franchise was Spy Kids All the Time in the World. The next Piranha, Scary Movie, and Sin City movies also pulled in lower numbers than their predecessors. Most of the Dimension Films releases in the 2010s got little attention, and they would even lose the rights to make new Halloween movies. Curiously, those rights ended up being controlled by the Weinstein's old home at Miramax. In addition to those disappointments, Dimension would miss out on releasing a hit shark movie. Dimension originally had the distribution rights to 47 meters down, intending a direct-to-video and VOD release for it. However, Byron Allen's newly formed Entertainment Studios acquired the film, and it managed to do decent business in the summer of 2017. The Weinstein Company was having financial difficulties at the time, so it's hard to say if 47 meters down would have made that much of a difference to their fortunes. However, they would experience a much bigger change a few months later when the stories about Harvey Weinstein's behavior was publicly revealed and the Weinstein Company would eventually file for bankruptcy. Its assets were then sold to the equity firm Lantern Entertainment. The last few productions released with the Dimension label still attached were the Netflix animated series Spy Kids Mission Critical and the horror movie Polaroid. Despite everything that has happened, Bob Weinstein still planned to continue producing movies, announcing in 2019 that he had started a new production company that would focus on the kinds of movies he specialized in at Dimension. However, nothing has been produced yet, because why would anyone want Harvey Weinstein's brother and closest partner making them movies? Dimension Films has produced several notable horror movies and even their fair share of comedies and family films, but those were the result of talented filmmakers like Wes Craven and Robert Rodriguez, and it's their artistry that should be remembered and celebrated. See you next time.